So now for the first uh, 555 timer circuit that I'm going to use, so that's an integrated circuit. We'll look at that in more detail coming up. We're going to make a, a Schmidt trigger. So what that means is the output changes based on the voltage that we input. Yeah, so that's that's the trigger part, but the Schmidt trigger part of it means that there's not a specific voltage that the output changes. So if we go to two-thirds of the supply voltage or more, that's going to set the output low, if it was already high, actually low for that way. And uh, then if we get to one-third of the supply voltage, well, the output is low or less, that's going to set the output high, which will go that way. So that's why it's an inverter. The uh, input signal, if it's low enough, the output is high. And if it's high enough, the output is low. It's in the opposite uh, direction. But there's that middle ground between one-thirds and two-thirds where it's going to stay the way the output's going to stay where it is, depending on where it was last set. Now, we have to uh, power the integrated circuit. And so pin number one goes to the negative side of the supply, pin number eight to the positive right there. We also have pin four going directly to positive, that's the reset pin. We do not want it to do anything, and uh, it's waiting for a low signal, I think uh, less than half of the supply voltage. But in any case, you put it directly to the positive supply, it makes it so it doesn't do anything. Pin number two is the trigger pin, pin number six is the threshold pin, we'll look at that coming up. But uh, in any case, you get to uh, two-thirds of the supply voltage, pin six tells the output to go low, and then you got current coming in to the output right there. If you lower the uh, voltage, we're going to do that with the trim pot, then pin number two may have been a little less confusing if I put two down there and six up there, but in any case, you get the voltage low enough, pin number two, the trigger pin, sets the output high, and then the red LED will light up. When it comes to protecting the uh, resistors, the blue LED that I'm going to use, I'm going to use a 1 kilo ohm resistor to protect it, whereas I'm going to use 220 ohms for the red LED. That's because the blue LEDs are naturally brighter, and uh, also the output makes a much better connection to ground than it does to the 5 volt uh, supply if we're using 5 volts. It, uh, I think it gets like 4 if you're, you're lucky or something. But in uh, any case, it doesn't quite output uh, 5 volts in this case, but it does go uh, pretty much directly to ground. So even if they were the same color, the one up here will probably get brighter. Might be a little better, use a higher value resistor. But in any case, not terribly important. Let's get working towards building it. The 555 timer component we'll look at uh, on the board came from this kit. It's an NE555. I think that's just to indicate the manufacturer, but it's always a good idea to look at the data sheet for the particular 555 timer you're using. But uh, this is going to be the more generic ones. There's also specialty 555 timers out there. But in any case, we got pin one, two, three, four, and then once you get to the bottom, you move across. So longer integrated circuits, you keep counting down. But we got four across to five, six, seven, eight. And eight is the positive supply. Pin one is ground. We got uh, pin two, the trigger. Pin number six is threshold. They're the ones monitoring the voltage. So we'll see a jumper tying them together. We have an output here. That's where we're gonna connect our LEDs and then have the uh, power supply going to them with a the protective resistor. The reset pin again, we will see a jumper going to the positive supply. That prevents it from doing anything. We can leave the control pin floating and sometimes you'll see a capacitor there. It uh, won't bother anything. Discharge pin. That discharges a capacitor when you're using one, it connects to ground, and uh, again, we can leave it floating, won't uh, influence anything at all. And we are finally to the circuit. There's the 555 timer. Of course, we have to power it. So the positive side of the supply up there, the uh, negative over there, we got uh, pin number one up there, pin eight. Pin number two, the trigger is tied to pin six with that jumper, and we have another connection there to the trim pot, the middle pin. And right now the trim pot is set to 5 volts, positive supply. And then we got negative over there and uh, for our voltage divider so that we can all put the voltage that we want. It doesn't have to give the input any current. The input just looks at the voltage so the input is not going to throw it off at all. Uh, here's the output pin 3 and then we have pin number 4, the reset pin to the positive supply telling it not to do anything. So now I'm going to grab the uh, 1 kilo ohm 
resistor for the blue LED right there and put it to the output. So the uh, trim pot is set above two thirds of the supply voltage. That set the output low. And uh, so the other side of the LED is to the positive side of the supply. So it's going from high to low. And uh, long lead the anode up to the positive jumper there. Jumper to the positive. And then the uh, red LED, the short lead, the cathode, is to the gray jumper right there. And we're gonna take a 220 ohm resistor to power the red LED. Once we give this a low input below one third, then the output will go high and uh, current will flow through that uh, red LED. And uh, we can zoom back a little bit to see a little bit better. And there you can see the red LED uh, lit up. And so now I can go above that point where it changed I gotta go up to about that corner there for it to change and now I can go down a little bit doesn't matter it's not one particular point this range in the middle is called hysteresis where it's gonna stay the way that it got last put but you exceed that uh, threshold of uh, two-thirds supply voltage or one-third supply voltage then the output changes so in any case a lot of that is digital electronics topics for future videos but I think this is the simplest 555 timer circuit to understand. It's not usually uh, taught. There's uh, a few other ones I'm going to cover in the next video that uh, all sources teach. I never uh, see this one being teach uh, at all. But uh, I really enjoy this one, so I always start off with this one. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate Patreon if you can. I have a link down in the description that would help out a ton. I'll see you in the next video.